pretty much everywhere, it's going to be hot. Shut it. Then I don't need a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Arthur. Hold on to your butts, idiots, because you're watching Dollar Bin of Doom. Each episode, your hosts, Kevin and Sam, watch a movie they find for a dollar and discuss if it was worth it. Spoilers, it rarely is. And now, your least favorite friend's favorite YouTube channel, The Miserable Hair People. Like if Jackie Robinson talked about 9-11 a lot. <laughs> Paul, do you talk about 9-11 a lot? Well, I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> you talk about 9-11 a lot. You really do. Why do we do that? That's a great question. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, what's going on? Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Dollar Bin of Doom. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a guest. We do. But we have Paul. Good evening. Because we are in Spooky Bullshit Month. That's right. It's back, baby. Uh, what did we watch, Paul? We watched a very spooky movie for Spooky Bullshit Month called Axum. Uh, yeah. It's a film that came out in 1992. You actually brought this. This is your like personal stash that you brought to us. Right? Uh, I guess you could say that, yeah. I mean, uh, this is a movie that we actually reviewed on B-Movie Mania for our TV show, which we did seven or eight years ago now um and we reviewed this and i thought it might be fun to kind of revisit and i was mistaken and i apologize <laughs> it's all right we've we've watched we always say boring is the worst thing this was not yeah. boring right no it was just very difficult seriously i'll remember a lot of this oh least. oh yeah. yeah 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 i won't like understand it or <laughs> no, be able no, to no. explain it to anybody but yeah i'll remember it <laughs> Uh, you want, Kevin, you want to start out with a plot? <laughs> uh, sh uh, sure, I guess. <laughs> if, you, if you at all can. Um, I mean, the skeleton is there for like a basic kind of horror slasher movie. You right. Know? Teens to mid 40s. Yep. All, all <laughs> hanging out. Go to the uh, And then uh, start dying one by one. That's like the, the basic skeleton of the movie. And then you start loading on meat and you're like, yeah, but you're adding bacon. Like You're supposed to be adding like muscles and right. stuff. It starts out with like a... What do you even call something like this? Dance. There was something before the dance sequence, though. Competition thing. Oh, was there? It didn't just start oh, off with Oh, that old it. guy that kept muttering about a pistol. Yeah. That happened, <laughs> I think, before. Oh, God, this one's going to be tough. We're, we're going to need all three of us here, Paul. If, if you know what's going yeah. on, jump in. We, we see a little bit of the killer, actually, uh, at the front here, where uh, there's an old man in a house muttering about something it's let's just get the elephant in the room out of the way here a lot of this movie is very difficult to understand yeah it's a <laughs> mixture of either too quiet or way too much noise But there's an old man. He's got a gun. Yeah. Uh, he gets killed very quickly by the killer. Uh, he says, oh, shit. Oh, shit. We also, uh, I think the very first shot of the movie is them, like, all in school. Remember, they're all just standing yeah. around going, ha -ba -ha -ba -ha -ba -ha -ba -ha oh, for, yeah. like, ten minutes. <laughs> Well, they're making their plans. They want to go somewhere for the weekend. You know, they want to find some sort of cabin in the woods to have a nice weekend getaway like the start of any horror movie that takes yeah. place in the woods. It feels like an event that was held at the community college. It's like a dance cheer squad slash guy doing shtick. Mm -hmm. DJ party. It was like a roast. There was a going name on. for it. Block party? Step dance? Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm too white for this movie. Yeah, I was about I to say. Yeah, we're I, white. Sorry. <laughs> my whiteness is treading lightly. I don't want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> call something wanna, it's not supposed to be called. Yeah, exactly, right. It was the early 90s, which means it was absolutely prime time for Your Mama is So Fat jokes. That's yeah, right. They did that for about half the runtime, I they think. They sure did. Your mama's so fat, her shadow weighed 40 pounds. Your mama's so dumb, she studied all night for a blood test. Your mama's so dumb, she was in a shootout, got stabbed. Your mama's so fat, she jumped in the air and got stuck. <laughs> That's why your mama's so fat, every time she turn around, she get lost. Your mama, her own best friend. That's why y'all so poor, went to McDonald's and ordered some scratch and sniff cheeseburger. Let's make sure that we don't skip over the amazing uh, title graphic oh, that we yeah. get at the beginning. I just like Ax- the actual title of the movie, Axum, gets this sweet like silver box around it. <laughs> the movie also started off with like a uh, text that we were like, we could not read. On a cold winter night in 1990, Mr. Mason, a mean and cruel I, town. Oh, oh well, shit. When the police arrived, they only found the box. Oh shit. <laughs> Legend, Legend has, has it. it. He will. Re- Fuck. It'd be like if the opening of Blair Witch, like it was only on frame for like two seconds. Yeah. We should talk about uh, Blair Witch sometime, Kevin. Yeah, let's do it. How do you feel mm-hmm. about the second one? Love it. You want to mm-hmm. see it? I got it right here. I'd rather not. Some special features for you. Why are there so many fucking special features in that movie? Because it was 2000. That was the jam. That's, That's the right. Point. I bet interactive menus is one of the special features. Let me check for you real quick. Oh, yeah, very bottom, interactive menus. You got it. Oh, Called my it. God. Imagine if that wasn't one of the features. Like, all those features were there, but you couldn't interact with it well, at yeah, all. Like, yeah, yeah. No, it would just play sequentially. Yeah, you, you could do nothing about it. <laughs> the movie would start. <laughs> no way to pause it. <laughs> it's like when they put bleep uh, bloopers on, like, the end of a VHS. Yeah. Like, it just, like, keeps going. It's like a director interview. <laughs> my favorite is where, you know, like, a, a DVD doesn't have too much going on in terms of special features, so... The special features will just say, like, full frame. Oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, everybody. It's Kevin. Just wanted to jump in in the middle of the video. Uh, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you're having a good day so far. So I also actually wanted to let you know of a pretty ingenious way I just came up with for you to help us grow the channel. So I went ahead and made a graph. Uh, as you can see, that's you at the top. And all you have to do is share the video with two of your friends. And then they will go ahead and share the video with two of their friends. And then they, I'm describing a pyramid scheme again. Damn it. Why are all my ideas pyramid schemes? Anyway, you should uh, still share the video with someone. Here, we can do it. It won't come off. Main characters end up driving. Yeah. We, we watch it for a while. They arrive. One of the guys they did they just didn't have room for, so he just walked there. <laughs> right. And they arrived at the exact same time. Then uh, that's kind of where the rest of the movie takes place. They I guess they like Airbnb'd that uh, spooky hotel or something. Like I don't think any of them owned it. Well, just like the the characters in the movie, the locations in the movie were really hard to keep track of. Yes. So it all was spaceless. Yeah. Spa- we didn't really space and time was real hard to keep track in this. Movie. Yeah. Not helped at all by every transition being a crossfade. I'm sure, you know, as a filmmaker yourself, Paul, there's like a a time and place for like fades. Is the rule every time? Uh, Usually it's not every time. Usually you want to fade out or crossfade uh, to indicate the passage of time. Right. There was some flashback stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There was one Uh, flashback. Right. That really, but it really moved the plot forward and sort of gave me a, a really uh, solid foundation for, you know, what these characters have been through and sort of maybe where things might be heading. I would actually like to see a full blown prequel, you know, with all those kids. Sort of like I, I, I want more of that. You know, right? Sure. For no other reason than for us to maybe know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> It's like Avatar. Like, they've just spent the last 20 years filming the next, like, nine Axum movies. Right. We can only hope. Yeah. They'll start cranking them out, like, every six months now. Axum Cinematic Universe. (laughs) Well, we got... uh, Let's get back on track. The kids show up to the house. Yeah. 
they drive up in their four cars, and then the one guy's like, man, why'd you leave me up behind? I had to run all the way here. Then, like salvation, they sit down for a, a wonderful uh, KFC meal. That's right. And then uh, they proceed to, like, tell jokes. One guy, like, stands up and does, like, a whole routine. Yeah. And my favorite part of that, <laughs> you remember, Paul, is when he goes, <laughs> He says, fuck. Yes. That's where it oh, makes everybody laugh. Oh, yeah. yeah. In this PG slasher movie, because there is, like, no blood. Yeah. Only piss. <laughs> Remember when you uh, you get into Bioshock, you're like coming down the elevator, it says, no gods, no kings, only piss. <laughs> only piss. Yep. There's a lot of post-dinner uh, magazine reading for some reason. I mean, it is yeah. 1992. You got to catch up on Ebony. Right. Yeah. Well, that, there was that lady that just like opened the mag up on her mashed potatoes. Like she <laughs> just put it on her plate and she's like, done now. <laughs> I'm tired <laughs> of all of this conversation. Right. Uh, two of the characters go to pork in a porcelain tub. In a porcelain yep. tub. Porcelain tub. It apparently goes great because uh, all the other girls ask about it and she's like, He tore it up! <laughs> Which is an interesting opinion to have about your own body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wrecked this shit. Yeah. It's, Fucking ow. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cloaca down there. It's just one, one big hole. He, he turned two holes into one. Jesus. Nice chicken joke. We're 42 minutes into the movie. And something finally happens, which is unrelated characters, car breaks down. Yes. Yes. And then the the only white people in the movie uh, get out of the car and they're like, well, let's go into this abandoned house because clearly there's a phone in this yep. weird house where like there hasn't been any leaves raked up for a year. Right. And he just starts walking around and screaming, hello. I know you're in here, motherfucker. Well, you forgot, though, that the minute they stepped in the uh african-american gentleman that was with our dumb white guy was like clearly this is not a place we can get help <laughs> i'm leaving yeah and he leaves to his credit and uh the white guy's like oh, you, they, i know the drywall's fucking falling apart but let me see if they have a phone in here anybody <laughs> helping me and then the fart gases start leaking in mm -hmm. and it's misty for some reason for some reason and the white guy dies yep he's killed by uh our what uh Michael Myers? Like basically Michael yeah. Myers. Correct. I got more of a Jason Voorhees vibe. Okay. Yeah. Machete, it, it, yeah, uh, flannel shirt. Jason yeah. Jason but, Myers. Uh, and that's the big reveal of our, our villain, which is I think we saw earlier in the movie, right? He like he, he was the gentleman who, who killed the very yeah. old grandpa. Right. And then that's the rest of the movie. Well, there was another porking by, mm -hmm. by Guy yeah, in Yellow Jacket. Yeah, that's they, right. They pork in the woods. It was very, very subtle when uh when the other gentleman goes to make his stinky piss. Oh. He's got to air it out like right afterwards. Yeah. Uh, he sees Jason Myers like walking through. Yeah. And then uh, someone at some point goes to open a door and then dead white guy falls through. I also want to mention, you know, during that stinky piss scene, there was no ADR in this movie. All the sound was bad, but it was all, you know, done on location. Yep. Which means that we, I think, really got some genuine piss it action going on. Would there. not have surprised me if they were like filming other stuff, and then the director told him like, "Hey, whenever you got a piss, just let me know. And we'll go film that." Yeah, I, I like to think that that scene was really important to the filmmaker, and they took a couple of takes, and every take he had to chug fucking <laughs> Powerade or whatever, because <laughs> you you know the timing had to be right. You take a piss, the guy outside is counting one. Yeah. To uh, Mississippi three, Mississippi four, Pississippi. and the guy's taking his piss. He's got to pee for a specific amount of time, and then open the window and retch horribly out of the window while our villain is carrying a corpse up there. Well, staircase. that was crucial to the plot. I mean, that was uh, you might even call that the inciting incident when he sees the uh, the killer for the first time. The inciting yeah. pi pins piss inciting pissident. Yeah. You know, I might have to take oh an inciting pissident <laughs> yeah, later. I'm feeling it. Uh, one of my favorite things about doing this show with you is you saying something so fucking stupid, <laughs> and I'm like, that's definitely going in. I can't wait to edit the whole episode around that. I have the IMDb page pulled up for Axum. Uh, I just uh -oh. thought we might mention real quick this guy's name, the director and the writer and the star of the film. It's a, like a Tommy Wiseau situation here. Yeah. His name is Michael Mufume. I hope I'm saying that right, but it's his... This is his brainchild. Yeah. Yes. My theory on like a good, bad movie isn't just that the filmmaker took it really seriously. It's that they did something badly 
that's more complicated than the lazy way. Yes. And there's a lot of that in this <laughs> yeah. movie. Like they didn't have to get that guy a stool so that he could film <laughs> a weird dumb angle down on everybody who's at the really tiny dining table. Yeah. So there's stuff in this that's like he didn't have to try that hard to be that bad, but he did it. Yeah. We, we always talk about sincerity is the funniest thing in the world. Right. And also what makes a great bad movie is someone trying something out of their skill set. Totally. Like uh, The Room, the the set on the roof. You could have found a roof, man. Yeah. You didn't have to make a set. You didn't have to. Same with the football alley scene. <laughs> exactly. There's one like, right outside. Yeah. Just go you can... right there. <laughs> you don't even have to get a permit. So Would yeah. you guys be interested in hearing just a little piece of the uh, trivia for I, this movie? That's I want to know movie? everything about this fucking movie. This is interesting because there's some moments in the film, we haven't really gotten into this yet, but there's some characters who sort of like break the fourth wall and there's some like comedic yeah. elements to it, right? Yeah. It's arguably the um, stuff that I really didn't like. I hate when people <laughs> look at the fucking camera. Dude, we're finally getting what something What the happened. fuck is going on? <laughs> Stop looking at the fucking camera. <laughs> well, it says here the original cut of the film, which was titled The Weekend It Lives, was supposedly more of a comic horror than straight horror. Yeah. When York Entertainment picked up the home video rights in 2003, they drastically recut the film. Wow. Scenes are now incomplete, out of order, or missing entirely, leaving much of the film incoherent. Dude, the reason that dude's arm was cut doesn't make any sense, but later he gets his arm cut, which gives it continuity. That makes so much sense. Re release the Mufumbe cut or whatever. It is, yeah. right? Give yeah. us the Mufumbe <laughs> cut. Yeah. Give us that four hour <laughs> cut on HBO, baby. <laughs> where are we in this fucking dumpster? Uh, Paul, do you know where we're at in this fucking dumpster? <laughs> the rest of the movie is screaming and running in the woods. Yes. There's also a lot of, um, you know, shots where it looks like characters, main characters are getting killed off. Yes. And then they just pop back up in the <laughs> next scene. Yep. You're exactly right. There's two characters that we kind of can recognize, and they're the two that fucked in the tub. Yes. Um, and these tub fuckers. The <laughs> <laughs> it's like trash humpers. <laughs> end up dying in that scene. And then I think he takes one in the face. And she definitely does. But they're in some of the rest of the movie. Yes. Which I'm glad you brought up that, that this was a bad cut because it definitely was a bad cut. Yeah. Can't envision the original cut being very good but still <laughs> it's the sort of thing where i would never want to see the original cut this no, is no. all i want yeah. this is the only axiom that i will accept yeah so mafumbe might not be the man for the job let me put it this way if there are other people out there maybe like you guys who would like to see the mafumbe cut i'm all for it i'm just it's not something that i'm gonna do personally you'll let That's someone fair. explain the mafumbe cut but sure. You, you won't sit for the four hour. HBO. Exactly. Why is that funny? It's someone's no, name. I, I, think, I think we're pronouncing it wrong. We probably are. Can you read it out again? Michael. Hold on. I'm reading uh, Amazon user reviews as well. <laughs> uh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> this is my favorite movie. Michael Mufume. Was that, were we saying Mufumbe? I think we were throwing a B in there. Yeah. The point is, Michael, if you happen to be watching, thank you for making Axum. You yes, made a thing, man. Please. Thank you. you have not made Whose shit. idea was it to have three white guys review this movie? It was yours. Yeah. We will put this on no. you. We'd Would you believe shit. it was someone named Paul? <laughs> Damn. And he watched it with Kevin and Sam. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I want to point out my favorite character, which I, is the guy yeah. in all white <laughs> who was yes. having... The most fun on set. <laughs> He's all over the place. Yep. He's like twirling around trees and like. Yeah. Yeah. Like skipping up and down. Was, oh my God. It wasn't just skipping. It was like waving his arms and shit. Like. <laughs> it was fantastic. Yeah. I wish I had a quarter of that man's energy. Seriously. Oh, Jesus Christ. It does make more sense. I know that you didn't like some of the comedy, but it does make more sense knowing that it's, that it was intended to be more of a parody that some of that really goofy stuff is in there. It makes yeah, more sense now. It definitely does. And uh, yeah, I think you go one way or the other with it. This one, it, it was, it's the Justice League cut where it's like two different things and you try and mash them together and like neither one of them work. Right. So as yeah. much as I, I hate the Snyder cut, I hate the original, 
at, well, le- at least the Snyder Cut has like a vision and it's someone's like whole thing. Yeah. There's a cohesiveness to it. I would kill to see the original. Fucking look at the camera, please. No, I'm just. I'm just <laughs> uh, eventually, they all like end up in a house, like in a basement or something. Yeah. And then they're face to face with their uh, killer. Yeah. And then the killer like tosses them like a, a baggie of cocaine or something. Yeah, that never <laughs> resolved itself. I don't think we ever quite figured out what that was that was no. was in his pocket that he no. was trying to like negotiate with them somehow. Yeah, right. and then it just cuts to her like bam, bam, and the guy falls and he bounces back up. And they stab him with a fucking pitchfork. He falls again, and then he's dead. We, we think it he's looks dead. like he's dead there. And then they leave, and then he gets back up again. Yeah, he's he's fine. Crossfade. <laughs> Next day, car drives by. He walks by a rock. Fade to black rap music. Yeah. Also, at some point, our slasher had a gun. <laughs> what? Wait, he's got a gun? He's got a gun? <laughs> right. Oh, you escaped my machete. Actually, fuck this. <laughs> Bam. Bam. Exactly. Everybody needs a backup plan, you know? Yeah. Maybe that was a joke in the joke cut. Uh, and it was uh, actually funny. Yeah. A good point. So you Probably gotta not. reframe. You gotta kind of reframe all of this now a little bit. I know. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. It adds an extra layer of mystery to this fucking mystery. <laughs> well, the other thing that we haven't touched on yet, uh, towards the beginning of the film, there's two sort of drunk guys in the movie. Oh, uh, fuck. yeah. Who, who are just mumbling stuff and kind of stumble away. It's like a minute and a half long scene. Yeah. I don't think you ever see him again in the movie. Absolutely not. No. I think it's the movie, right? Yeah. Yep. That's about it. I can't remember anything else. Yeah. That's all I got. Uh, Yeah. Movie. Movie. And movie. Yep. Another one down. And fade. Back in. All right. Yep. Fade. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Cross Gotta fade. Gotta use those oh, axum fade. fades. <laughs> well, Paul, this was fun. Thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Now yeah. comes the fun part where we talk about was this movie worth a dollar? The dollar's such a low bar. It is, but yeah, I would absolutely pay a dollar for this movie. Um, it's the sort of thing that I love to come across finding it, you know, like in some box somewhere at a yeah. thrift store or, you know, some used DVD place or yeah. VHS okay. place. I would absolutely do it again. Yeah. All right. Awesome. What about you guys? I would definitely give it a dollar. Really? I would actually try and seek this out so we buy a physical copy of it. Wow. Well, I mean, I I have the tape somewhere. I I had hoped to bust it out for you, but I think, like I said, we reviewed it on B-Movie Mania, and I think that it's still up at Mike's place in Chicago. Right. But I can absolutely... At some point, you know, rip it and see if we can get a better version of this going. Hey, that'd be great. Yeah, because it'd be it'd be nice just for the collection. Because we could definitely put this on the so bad it's good shelf. Because it's it's good. Yeah. I really liked it. The only VHS tape that I have sitting around right now is this one right hey, here. Hey, look, look at that. that! Thanks for doing that, by the way. That has a lot of storage on it. That we're up to what, like almost two hours of content right. on that. Yeah. yeah, that's a big fucking reel. <laughs> uh. Man, don't. What was the one you gave that I hated? So oppressed the, the fucking Logan's War. You gave that shit a dollar, you motherfucker. I'm still even forgiving you for that. <laughs> How rare is it that that everything gets a dollar, a full dollar amount? It, if if we get at least three people giving it a dollar, it goes into our Hall of Fame. Yeah. I can't put it in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm sorry. Bitch. I didn't like it. I didn't you like it. Bitch. I'd give it like fifty cents. I think that's totally fair. <sighs> Thank you. I. I liked the bafflingness of it. I liked putting the puzzle together, but like, I could, I, I'm, I can't. I'm sorry. Jesus. Yeah, this is not the thing that you're you're gonna like watch yeah. over and over and over again. No. I suppose maybe if you want to get a group of friends together to watch this, it could be. That's exactly the environment that I'm. Yeah. Like if we ever do a fucking miserable hair people Christmas party, I would totally hey, fucking. That sounds fun. Put this fucker out. Yeah. I mean, you can't hear any of the movie anyway, so you can talk over it as much as you want to. Yeah, Yeah, totally. It wasn't annoying. It wasn't even (laughs) frustrating. It wasn't. We've watched way more frustrating shit than this. Fucking Logan's War was more frustrating than this shit. Chuck Norris joking. 
Can I meet you guys in the middle here, maybe? Sure. I would say that it was frustrating, but fascinating. Oh, absolutely. I just wouldn't, right. I wouldn't give it a dollar. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, those donuts were pretty good. If you guys are uh, in the mood for some spooky donuts, pick up some Entenmann's uh, pumpkin flavored donuts. Yeah, yeah, not a sponsor, but hey, yeah. we stand by it. Me and Kevin enjoyed you lavishly shoving those into your face the entire time. <laughs> you kept uh, making us pause the you. movie and like yeah. watch you be like, hey, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> like a snake. Yeah. It's kind of dislocating yeah, I hope, the jaw. Put, I hope at least some of that makes the final cut. Me shoving I, donuts it will in my now. face. Put it in your mouth and like pelican it down. You're like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything I'm known for, it's my fast eating. Yeah. yeah. It's that throat game. Yeah, the throat game. <laughs> exactly. Like that girl. Good she night, was like, everybody. Ah, ru he ruined the back of my throat. <laughs> Woo! All the right. ladies freaked out. <laughs> How was it? It was great. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love this movie. How dare oh, you? No, I How thought fucking you hated it. You? No, I loved it. Well, thank you, Paul. This was a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of very similar tastes, and uh, I feel like I should just mention that both of you have done stuff for our podcast. Kevin, you've you've had several different characters on there. Sam, you've done some stuff as well, so thank you for that. Oh, thanks hey. for having us. Thanks for coming on this. Absolutely. Make sure you go listen to uh, our season, uh, I think it's season five. The season five finale is... Our review of Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2, and uh, it gets a little spicy. It does. Yeah. It gets a little heated. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you have a movie coming up too, right? I mean, we might as well get into this. Sure. We shot a movie here in central Illinois last summer, and it's uh, deep into post-production right now. It's getting pretty close to, be, to being finished. It's called Hunting for the Hag, and it's sort of a... Uh, I won't say found footage, but uh, it has kind of a found footage horror feel to it. Cool. Yeah, when it gets closer, we'll uh, we'll do one of these like things again, and we'll just bullshit and talk about the movie. And yeah. The process. And shit. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to bed now. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Love you. Goodbye. You, you go home. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Another great episode of Dollar Bin of Doom. Probably my favorite so far. That's not true. I love the Tony Hawk one. Make sure you like the video and share with your dumb friends. And leave a comment letting us know if you thought it was worth a dollar. Until next time, idiots. <laughs>